video, we're going to look at the workflow of programming 3D parts in HSMWorks. In previous videos, we already looked at how we create a job to define the model we're machining, the stock we're machining it from, and the fixtures we're using to hold it in place. We've also looked at how we can create and manage tools using the HSMWorks tool library. So to help us stay focused on the fundamentals of 3D toolpaths, I've already defined my tools and created the job. With that said, let's rough out the part. From the 3D milling dropdown, I'm going to select Adaptive Clearing. I'll click Library and select my 3 8 inch bullnose end mill. All I have to do is click OK and the toolpath is going to begin generating in the background. There was no need to make any geometry selections because we're automatically roughing any stock that's on the model. Now that the toolpath is generated, I can click Stock Simulation and press Play to preview what the model's going to look like. You'll notice Adaptive Clearing was capable of taking very deep roughing cuts, so a secondary fine step down was used to get in closer to the model. Using the Compare icon, I can see where there's still stock left on the model, indicated in dark blue. This draws attention to a few key areas where the large tool was unable to get. So I'm going to click OK and continue roughing out the part. Again, I'll select 3D milling and adaptive clearing, this time using a smaller cutter, the 3 16 bullnose end mill. I need to move to the geometry tab and change the rest machining option from looking at all of the stock defined in the initial job setup to looking at the stock left over from the previous operation. At the same time, I would like to get close into this flat surface here. So on the Passes tab, I'm going to turn on Flat Area Detection. I can click OK. And again, my toolpath begins generating in the background. While that's calculating, let's go ahead and run a horizontal strategy to finish the top of that flat face. I'll click Horizontal. I'm using the same tool, and I can move on to my Heights tab. I'm going to restrict my horizontal toolpath to only look at surfaces that are 1 8 of an inch below the top face of my model. So th this contains the toolpath within the top plane that I've defined and the bottom of the model. Again, we can click OK, and the toolpath will begin generating in the background while we continue on to programming the remainder of the part. The next operation is going to be a 3D contouring operation for the steep faces of the model. I'll click Library and select my quarter inch tool for this operation. On the Geometry tab, we now have the chance to look at some alternative ways to containing the toolpath. Although we could use rest machining along with the other methods, I'm going to leave it off so we can see the effect of each containment strategy. I'll start by using a slope containment. I'm going to change my from angle to 30 degrees, so we're just machining faces between 30 and 90 degrees. I'll now accept the toolpath to preview what this toolpath is going to look like. You'll notice that my horizontal strategy completed while I was setting up my contouring operation. Just to quickly go back, if I highlight the horizontal strategy, we can see that it automatically found that flat face on the model and machined it. Now, looking at the contouring strategy, it's obvious that we're machining just the steep areas. As we get into the shallow areas, we're no longer producing a toolpath. So this is the result we're after. However, at the same time, the toolpath is going around the outside of the part, and we really just want to contain it within the cavity. So let's go ahead and edit this toolpath and look at how we can contain it within the cavity. That's going to be covered by the machining boundary. Currently the boundary is set to silhouette, which is really the outline of the part. We're allowing the tool to go up until the outside of the silhouette, so that means the tool can go all around the outside of the part. If we change that to center, we're then going to contain the toolpath within the perimeter of the part because only the center of the tool can make it to the edge. Now at the same time, it would be a good idea to extend the toolpath 
slightly beyond the cavity. So we're going to enter an offset value to allow the tool to go slightly beyond center. I'll use an offset of 20 thousandths of an inch. We can now select OK, and the toolpath will regenerate. So we're still just machining the steep areas, but now we've contained it within the cavity. Let's finish machine the shallow areas now. From the 3D dropdown, I'm going to select Parallel. We're going to use this same quarter inch tool and move on to the Geometry tab where we can define the containment. This time under Slope Containment, we're going to change the two slope angle to 35 degrees. That gives us an overlap of five degrees between the two strategies. So we're containing the tool path within zero and 35 degrees, but I also want to keep it off of the flat areas, so I'm going to turn on check surfaces. When I turn on check surfaces, I can select faces that I don't want the tool path to touch. So I've turned on those check surfaces, and I'll select OK. Now when I look at the finished toolpath, the step over really is too aggressive. So let's go ahead and edit that toolpath. And naturally the step over parameters would be found on the Passes tab. So I'll select the Passes tab, and I'm going to change my step over to be one tenth of the tool diameter, so 0 0.025. And below we can see a calculation of what the cusp height is going to be as a result of our new step over value. At the same time, I'm going to change the pass angle from zero degrees to 45 degrees to make the toolpath more efficient on walls that are perpendicular to each other. So I'll set that to 45 degrees and select OK. Now that the toolpath is recalculated, we can see we have a much finer step over and the passes are 45 degrees to the model. Let's go ahead and select the job and run a stock simulation to see what's left on the model. I'll click play and speed the simulation up. With the simulation complete, we can compare the current stock to the model. And by the blue areas, see that the only spot there's still stock is in the tight corners where our tool couldn't get. As I hover over the blue areas, the values in the stock box are telling me how much stock is still on that part. So the only thing we have left to do is use a pencil toolpath to come in and clean out those corners. I'll select OK to get out of my stock simulation, move to my 3D milling drop down, and select Pencil. For this pencil operation, we're going to use the 1 16th ball nose end mill. I can then move to my Passes tab, where I'll set the number of step overs in the pencil operation. In this case, let's use 11 and the step over distance. In this case, we're going to use five thousandths of an inch. So I'll click OK. And the pencil operation followed into all the tight radiuses. Now it did miss the large radiuses at the end of the part here. So we're going to modify the operation so it finds them as well. I'll right click the operation and select Edit and move to the Passes tab. Here we can add an additional thickness so the tool picks up on larger radiuses. Let's add an offset of 1 8 of an inch and select OK.
And with that, my pencil operation has machined all of the radii. Should we want to use the same order of operations at some point in the future, we could simply select all of the operations, right click, and store them as a template. This would allow us to deploy the same operation sequence and parameters on new geometry. Well, with that, I hope you now have the confidence to begin programming 3D parts.